The mine tour took over two hours and not only included exploring the whole mine, but the several drifts off the main tunnel and the fluorescent cave they found below. It also includes touring the many original buildings left in the hills from the 1800s and was well worth the trip. After a 10 minute ride, we came to Hull Mine where we took up hard hats and rode a second tram 600 feet into the mountain to a depth of 100 feet below the surface where the main tunnel branches out like fingers under the mountain. Imagine if you can the Seattle Space Needle, which is slightly over 600 feet, laying on a downward slope of 10 degrees as you travel down the length of the Space Needle into the Earth. That is what we did. Does anybody know what this thing is right here? It's a port potty. A port potty, really? Oh, yeah. how cool is that? That's cool. So the miners always had to use the bathroom, and one thing that miners did is that they carried a hunk of chain with them like that, and when they needed to use it, they put their chain on there. The practical jokers would always come and yank the chain and push them down the rail. So when you ever heard that statement, don't yank my chain, don't pull my chain, that's where um, some of that has come from. Then they had to push their poop out again? <laughs> <laughs> no, you'd have two newbies that would be responsible for this to bring it out and dump it. But there were a lot of boots that were left here from the miners, mm -hmm. a lot of um, artifacts and things that were kind of just left down in the mine. And you can feel it's pretty comfortable down here. It's not cold, it's not damp. Um, we do have that airflow that kind of comes through there, so it's not real stuffy. What you do smell is the guano from the bat. Mm -hmm. So um, they came and they started with pick and shovel. And when the miners came, they came from the top down. This is kind of unusual that you're on a side slope of this. In the, the late 80s, a group of investors came in and invested $18 million. They're the ones that widened it up, kind of raised it a little bit, so you could have a vehicle that could actually come and drive through here versus using the rail. So um, when steam came, they um, had the Widowmakers, the air tools and things like that. And they call them the Widowmakers is because um, when you're breaking on this rock that um, ash that kind of got into their lungs and cut their lungs. And um, the first miners came, they came with candles. So they'd have a hunk of wire, they'd hang it on the wall, hang it on their helmets. Um, then the carbite came, and the carbite, they put it on the bottom, put water in the top, and then there's a mechanism on the top that would kind of adjust the drip of the water. And more water that hit that carbide, the brighter your lens would be. During World War II, they took most of the lead from this Castle Dome District area. 90% of the lead went to the war effort. So then um, when they came down and said the war was over, um, they left, the miners left with coffee still in their coffee cans and um, dynamite still in the rocks ready to be blasted. So this um, is a bell chart and no matter where you worked in Arizona, the bell charts went to each different mine. It was, um, they're ready to blast because you can't hear anything down here. You'd be relying on the bells. 
And so here's um, some of the Levi jeans that were actually found down here. These jeans here now, you can tell they're miners' jeans because the white spots on them um, is candle wax. And here's another pair from um, 1890. And Levi Strauss did come and um, authenticate them. He was offered 130000 for a pair, but he decided that they actually need to be in the museum. They were up in the... Um, up in the museum, and um, the sun and the light yeah. can kind of wear on that denim. So, yep. Okay, so we're back here with the UV lights. So, if you want to come back here, and you can kind of look up. You can see the sparkles all over the walls and stuff. Mm -hmm. Those are some of the minerals. Turn on the um, UV lights. And this is good. I feel like the colors have changed as it's into our more of light. The more the reds have come out. That is something. It really starts showing up after it's been exposed for a while. After our underground tour, we returned to the surface to explore some of the remaining old mining buildings and machinery from the 1800s. I got, got any stiffs? <laughs> oh, there they do. Undertaker. Looks like he has some uh, customers being prepared. All different coffins. Yeah. Jeez, ooh, this guy. <laughs> He's been there too long. <laughs> this is a stagecoach? Oh, stage wow. Coach, yeah. So this is... Uh, we stop and eat dinner and... Staying warm or cool. But no lodging, huh? Just a stop off. Just a stop, yeah. Thank you. 
Once we returned to the museum grounds, I walked over to the food truck for a bite to eat before the girls and I left to go back to our campsite and enjoy another desert sunset. I hope you enjoyed this tour and will give us a thumbs up and subscribe. There will be many more stories to come from the road with the girls and I. So, as we always say, the girls and I wish you happy trails and woof woof. <laughs>